Hello everyone, today I am going to explain how to implement SR flip-flop in BHDL language by using Xilinx software. As we all know that flip-flops are the clock clutch and it is used to store the state of a variable. In this example, we are going to use SR flip-flop to store the state of a variable named Q. Let us look at the schematic diagram of the SR flip-flop. So this is the schematic diagram of SR flip-flop and as we can see it has three input clock, S and R and it has two output Q and Q bar where Q is the variable stored in this flip-flop. Now suppose the present state of the variable Q is 0. Now the flip-flop will be active only when the clock signal is there. So only when the clock value is 1 or clock signal is there, in that case only the flip-flop will be in on state, enable state and in that time based on the value of S and R, the present state is going to update its state to the next state. So suppose the clock is present 1 and in that scenario uh, if the S and R both values are 0 and if the present state is 0 in that case the next state will remain same as 0. Now if the input S and R is 0 and 1 that means the system is going to reset itself. So whatever be the present state the next state will reset itself and it will become 0. Similarly, if the input S and R is 1 and 0, in that case present state will set itself and the next state will become 1. Now when the input vari variable value S and R is 1 and 1, in that case the present state will go into an unknown state and that is the drawback of SR flip -flop. Similarly, if the present state is 1 and obviously if the clock is on, in that case as if S and R both are 0, the next state will remain same as 1. But when the input S and R is 0 and 1, then the system will reset it to 0. When the S value is 1, R value is 0, the system or flip-flop will reset itself and the next state value will become 1. And when S and R both are 1, in that case, the next state will become unknown, which is the drawback of SR flip-flop. Now, let us try to implement this SR flip-flop by using Xilinx software. So, this is Xilinx software. Now, I am going to create a new project. Let us name it SR flip-flop. Then click next, next finish. Now let me click on the new source and going to write my code in VHDL. So select VHDL module, write your uh, name like uh, file name SR flip-flop, so SRFF. And as we have seen that uh, SR flip-flop has three input clock S and R and it has two output Q and Q bar. So the input will be clock and after that S, R and output will be Q and the negation of Q, so Q bar. These two are going to be the output. Now next finish. So this is the basic template of uh, the VHDL module. Let me little bit zoom it. And after that, we are going to write down our logic to implement the SR flip-flop within the begin and construct within the architecture. Behavioral architecture section, there is a begin and construct and within the begin and construct, we are going to write down our logic. Now, in this example, we are going to create a process and the process is similar to uh, any function or procedure in C language. So, let me... Uh, try to write down the process and this process is going to receive the input which is clock because flip-flops are the clock latch and uh, in this process I am going to create a variable which will act as a temporary variable so let us name it temp and the type of this variable will be std in so standard logic uh, and uh, 
so after that let me uh, try to write down the begin and construct of the process so begin means the process start beginning and in there i am going to write down our basic logic the basic logic is clock should be one and there should be clock some clock event so that the flip flop triggered so uh, the clock event may be positive edge triggering positive uh, level triggering negative edge triggering negative negative level triggering like that so the clock should be present and there should be some clock event and then then only uh, the flip flop will be enabled now based on the value of s and r the flip flop output or next state will change so suppose the present state s is 0 and uh, another variable value r is also 0 as we all know if the s and r both are same then the temporary variable is going to hold the temporarily the next state value so the temp value will same as temp it is not going to change now else if the condition changes like if the condition becomes uh, s is 0 and r is 1 then what we do obviously that means the system will go to reset itself so here temp value will be 0 and you should notice one more thing uh, that uh, here i have used colon equal not less than equal because temp is a variable not input to the circuit so that is why i have used colon equal and after that you must put a semicolon similarly let me check for the other cases like when the value of s is 1 and the value of r is 0 in that case the temporary variable will hold the next state which is now 1 because s is 1 else the last scenario when both s and r both are 1 else in that case the temporary variable will go into some unknown state let me represent the unknown state with a variable z put a semicolon and after that i am going to close the uh, nested if as well as i am going to close the outer and inner both the ifs i am going to close now after that the actual output variable q is going to receive the value of the temp and obviously the complement of the q which is q bar is going to receive the complement of temp so not temp so this is how we are going to update the actual output and after that we are going to end the process so p r o c e end process we are going to end the process now you need to save the program and you need to compile the program so let me compile this program. there is some error let me look why it is giving some error so yes i should have put uh, this inside a single code now let me compile the program again so you can see the program runs successfully now what we need to do we need to go to the behavioral simulation and in the behavioral simulation i again need to create a new source and I need to create a test bench waveform. So this is going to use for testing purpose. So testing. And after that, I am going to we are going to create a test bench module for the SR flip flop. Let me click the finish button. As you can see, the clock is toggling between zeros and one, and the step size is 200 nanoseconds. So after the 200 nanosecond, I want to set the value of S to one and between 400 and 500 nanosecond i want to make the value of s and r both is zero and between 600 and 700 nanosecond i want to set the value of r as one s as zero and within 800 and 900 nanosecond i want to make the value of s and r both is one so we are only focusing on the region when the clock value is one because uh, when clock value is zero the flip-flop is in disabled state so between for 200 and 300 you can see the r value is 0 s value is 1 similarly between 400 and uh, 500 nanosecond you can see uh, the s and r both value are 0 
Similarly, between 600 and 700 nanosecond, the R value is 1 and S value is 0. And between 800 and 900 nanosecond, the S and R both are having value 1. Now, let me save this uh, test bench file and after that, let me simulate it. So in the simulation, we can see when the clock value is 0, nothing to look at. Between 200 and 300 nanosecond, clock value is 1, AC is 1, R is 0. And as AC is 1, so the variable Q will set itself and the variable Q will have a value 1. The complement of it will be 0. Then between 400 and 500 nanosecond, uh, the S and R both are having 0 values. And as S R both are 0, so Q will contain its previous state. It, uh, it will remain in the previous state, so Q will have a value 1. Now between 600 and 700 nanosecond, the S is 0 and R is 1. So system or the variable will uh, reset itself, so Q will have a value 0 now. And when S and R both are having 1 value, in that case, the system will go into the unknown state and in our example, we have considered the value Z for it. So as you can see, the Q is now the value Z. So that is it for today's class. Thank you.